This is Wings on the Air. Hi, my name is Ann Edenfield Sweet. Welcome to Wings on the Air. We have a great program for you today. We've got a professional development coach with us, Ken Jackson, a good friend of mine. And boy, we are going to discover our why and learn a lot. So Ken, I am so happy that you're with us today. Thank you. Share a little of your background so the listeners will know a little bit about what gives you that spunk and that who you are. Well, uh, I'm born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I did what everyone else is taught to do, go to school. Uh, I got a degree, uh, hold a degree in electronics, computer engineering, uh, ended up working for a major corporation for about 16 and a half, 17 years. Um, after a, f a while there, I figured out that I was uh, I wanted to make a change. So I actually walked in and quit. I'm not telling anyone to quit their job, but um, that's what I did. I've been a business owner here in Albuquerque for about uh, 29, 30 years um, in different industries, uh, different uh, business opportunities that I've taken advantage of and learned from. So currently a business owner, a speaker. I wrote a book and published a book in uh, 2016. So excited about about that. Live and learn your way to success. And right now, I'm a personal and business development coach helping people discover their why. And I'm also a consultant in the travel industry. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, I knew you did a lot of things. So I want you to tell us about the KJ effect. What is that? Well, my mission is to inspire people to turn their dreams into achievements and to motivate them into action so they may realize their potential on a personal and professional level. Um, really want to help people identify their why, their gift. I truly believe that everyone has a gift, uh, large or small, but being able to help people find that and then giving them an action plan to achieve whatever goals that they have. And of course the name, KJ effect, the Ken Jackson effect. So what is the mission of your organization? So ultimately, um, my mission is to help people. It is to help people identify um, what their why is, what their goals are. And if they have not identified those, then talk with them and, and have them write down those goals, you know, as well as I do, right? Uh, a dream is, becomes a goal when it's written down. And then we figure out an action plan to, to achieve that goal. And I know you're always doing new things. So share some of the new things that you're doing and teaching. Well, um, I'm really excited about what's going on now um, because I, I met someone and a spectacular individual, uh, Dr. Gary Sanchez. And I've established a relationship, a rapport, and working with him and being mentored by him and his group, um, I've now established and understand the meaning of why. Um, I've discovered my why. My mission is still the same, but my why is important. Um, my why is to help people find a better way to achieve their goals. How I do that is by challenging the current mindset. And then what I contribute is business and life experiences to have a positive impact um, on people's lives and, and get them the results that they really want. Yeah, because you did that yourself. If you left the corporate world, and you were making a big salary there and living the American dream, if sure. you will, uh -huh. but you gave it all up. So, so tell me why you gave all that up. How did so, you discover <clears throat> your why through that process? Well, I, you know, and, and I was very blessed um, working for a major corporation, having a degree. Um, but what I, what I realized is the, the control that I didn't have. Um, it, having a job is fine and, and that's great. God bless you. Um, but there was that, that little bit of push that said, hey, you know, there's more out there. Um, there's something else out there for you to do. There's an assignment. And I really looked at it and discovered that my why is the thing that pushed me to walk away. Um, after, you know, after 17 years, I just walked in and quit and I'm not telling anyone to quit their job. But um, when you start figuring out that there is more out there. <clears throat> to me, um, God made us in, in his image, right? And, and we are at the top of, of who we are. So to be here, um, is, there's a purpose for it. And that is what really encouraged me is that, well, if someone else can 
have a goal, have a dream, well, why can't I? And that's what I really love encouraging people to do is identify what that is for you and then pursue it. Don't just wait. There's no waiting, right? There's, there's pursuing it. There's taking action on a consistent basis. And that's really what I begin to look at is that the person that owned the company made a decision, had a plan. Well, then why couldn't I? Why couldn't I build something uh, for myself? So independent thought, independent actions, and being able to have a positive impact on, on many lives. And, you know, I think so many people get a job mm -hmm. and they kind of just, well, I don't like this job, but it's a job and I've got the bills and I've got to pay for, sure. for this and for that. And now the baby is coming and now I got to do this. And they stay in a job where they're not happy. Yeah. And they're just miserable. And you know, they wake up and say, oh my gosh, it's Monday morning. I got to go to work again. Well, I wake up every morning and say, yeah, I can't <laughs> wait to see what the day brings. And I'm sure that is the case for yeah. you too. And so I think probably discovering that why, if you can figure out why you're, you're living this life, mm -hmm. um, it gives you joy to yeah, wake up every day and not just plod along at a job for 17 years. And that took a lot of courage to walk out after 17 years. Uh, it, it did. Yeah. It was a lot of thought. So, so tell us more. Uh, tell us more about this Y Institute and how, how that works. Well, what's really awesome is uh, Dr. Sanchez worked with uh, the author of Start With Why, Simon Sinek. He worked with him about eight months. They created a simplistic process. They took over 1,500 questions, narrowed it down to a simple five-minute process that will help people identify their why. And after identifying the why, there's the how and the what. And he's put a great team together. And they've actually, you know, through the last 10 years, Dr. Sanchez has actually worked with over 40,000 people helping them discover their why. So when I talked to him and he started mentoring me and I started working with his great team, I became a why certified agent, simply meaning that now I can now go out and help others identify their why, help them with the how and the what. And it's just an awesome institution. They're doing a lot of great things. And really, our goal is to help one billion people discover their why. Wow. And, and I, I'm just I'm excited that the KJ effect is now working with uh, Dr. Gary Sanchez and what he's done and what his team is doing. And, you know, right now, if people want to discover their why, they can go to uh, mywhydiscovery.com and Take the process. It's a five minute process. And I'm just excited to to be able to be a part of this and taking my brand to that next level where now we can help more people. Now, a five minute process. So give me an example. I mean, what would I what kind of questions would I see and answer in that five minutes? So what you're going to do is the process is simple and you're going to answer a few questions and they're going to help you identify different parts of you. And then you're going to come up with basically down to nine different whys. And um, within this list, you're going to be able to identify who you are and the things that you want to do within this list. And then from that, from that list, you have your why. And then what we do is we take you through a how and a what process. As, and as I stated, you know, my why is to find a better way to help people identify uh, and, and get to their goals, achieve their goals. And so my why is a better way. Um, my how is to challenge challenge the current mindset. And then my what is to contribute. So within those nine definitions or that list of nine, you, we will be able to help you identify your why, your how, and your what, and then help you create basically a mission statement for yourself. Hmm. Well, we work with families of prisoners, as you know, mm -hmm. and people coming out of prison and people in prison. So if somebody were listening to this or they were sitting in prison and said, well, gee, I don't know where to start. I can't get on the Internet. I sure. can't do these things. What are what are some of those basic questions that, that they would be asked that maybe they could start thinking about right now? So here's some things to, to really think about. I, I tell people all the time, look, um, start thinking about what it is that you really want. People struggle with direction and clarity because they don't write it down. Um, you have to write things down. So um, who is it that you really want to be? What are the things that you really want to do? Where are the places you really want to go? What happens with people is when, they, when they're taken out of their comfort zone, they take the dreams that they have and they basically put them on a shelf, right? They think they're too big. But what I really, I really feel people should do is understand this. 
you serve a higher power. You serve um, God being who God is. There are no limitations. So just take off the limitations. Take the vision that you had before. Go back to that vision. Go back to the growth mindset, right? Some people say, go back to when you were a kid, right? When you were a child and the sky was the limit and everything else, there was no fear. Go back to that person and start figuring out and, and ha writing down some of the things that you really want. Because here's the thing. If you woke up, that means he still needs you here. That means you still have purpose here, no matter where you are. That's right. That's right. Well, I teach, uh, you know, how to get a job. And one of the mm -hmm. first, the very first thing I tell somebody is you got to discover what do you want to do? Yeah. If you're going to spend eight to 10, 12 hours a day doing something, yeah. it better be something you want to do and you, be around people mm -hmm. that you want to be around because you're going to spend the majority of your waking day huge majority of it with them mm -hmm. not your family not your spouse <laughs> yeah. not your children with your your the people you're working with yes, and so it has to be something so is that kind of the thing that you're you first have them identify okay i i i, I my bigger dream is this and then sure. then the, then the how is well what steps because you can't you can't own a company over here. You can't start the KJ effect right. <laughs> without some steps along the way. Sure. So then you help them with those those steps, and then um, it, so it was the the why, the how, the, the why, what. the how, and then the when, the what. Oh, the what? But but right. when too is a question yeah. to ask because when are you going to do it? Yes. Are you going to sit and wait all day, or are you going to do it right away? Exactly. Okay. So the what? <laughs> So, so talk about some of the what's. I, I'm curious well, about these things. Okay. I, I know other people are listening and saying, oh my gosh, I don't know what, what he's talking about here. Okay, so let's go through a simple formula. Yeah. Um, if you start with your purpose. So let's think of it this. What are the things that energize you? This is what, and you can do this at any point in time. Take out a piece of paper, pen, start writing down, make a list of the things that energize you, the things that you think about the most, um, what you feel your purpose may be. Okay, and then you're going to make a list of why you see yourself doing those things. What, why do those things energize you? Sometimes it could be anger. Sometimes it makes you happy. But write down why those things energize you. Then what you need to do is make a list of the talents you may have. Write down the things that, and believe me, I don't have any talents, but there are things within people that they've been told that they're good at, right? They know they're good at. Make that list. And then what you do is you add in your association and you just mentioned this, right? Who are we around? Make a list of the people you hang out with the most, right? Wear a makeup of the books that we read and about five to seven closest people that we hang out with the most, right? You've heard the term, uh, tell me who your friends are, I tell you who you are. That's okay, right. well, that holds to be true. And what we, we tend to deny is the people we're around may be the same people that are stopping us mm -hmm. from getting what we really want. And the other sad part is, is sometimes it's friends and or family. And then after you make that list, then what I, what I need you to do is we need to write down a list of the action plans, right? What are the steps that you, that you are willing to take, right? There's ready, willing, and able, right? People get down, they're, they're always ready, Right. And technically, they're always able, but it's the willing part. It's the commitment. Decide, commit, succeed. Right. So um, it's the commitment part that people uh, really stumble on. But you have to at least write down the action plan. So now if you have a daily action plan that you can take, whether it's reading a book, personal development, listening to books. I listen to a lot of books. Um, if you're in your car driving back and forth to work, if you can listen to the negative news at times or whatever may be on, then you can listen to a positive book. That's right. Right. So, I love um, yeah, yeah. So that formula right there, um, will, will get you in the process. It starts the process and then, um, diving deeper into that. Why will help you find the how, and then we help you find the what to put it all together. So you personally coach people. You sit down with them and walk them through things. You do I seminars, do. How, how, a variety of things. I do. So um, I do workshops and seminars uh, virtually or in person. Um, I do sit with people. And what I really want to do is find out what it is that you want. Let's go through this. Let's go through this um, why, discovering your why first. Then let's take you through this process, uh, this formula, the success formula. 
And now that we have a plan in place, a system, right, a process that we can now follow, and then I become your accountability partner, right? And a lot of times people don't want to be held accountable. Um, it's crazy at a job. You're okay being held accountable because, you know, uh, there may something may happen if you don't do what you're supposed to do. But when you're out here on your own, right, there is no boss. You are the boss. And the sad part about it is sometimes we're not the best boss that we could have for ourselves, right? Because we tend to find the shortcuts or we tend to make yep. excuses. Yep. So that's where a coach comes in is to be that accountability partner. Look, this is what you said you wanted. This was the goal. We have to keep pressing on. And, and that's what's really awesome about what I do. So somebody's <laughs> sitting at home and they're listening or somebody's sitting in a prison cell and they're listening mm -hmm. and they say, okay, I've got this goal. I want to get out. I want to do all these things. What are some of the pitfalls? Because I'm sure... Th that's sure. th th those are all the stumbling blocks that come along the way. So what are some of those stumbling blocks that people are going to, to have to face and accept and try to get past? Okay, so change. Um, yeah, change, sure. You know, people say that uh, they, they like change. Some people say they don't. But being able to adjust to the change, right? Accept what the change is. And then it, it really starts with the mindset. So do you see yourself as something more? Or are you being told and are you listening to what you're being told that you will never be able to be that? And um, when you start really looking at or listening to uh, the negativity around you, it takes you from a growth mindset to a closed mindset. And then what we really do is people fall back to what's comfortable. It's that comfort zone where, you know, it holds people captive. And it's really sad because people want to be comfortable. They, they want to feel safe and secure, but get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's where the growth happens. That's where the learning happens is, you know, meeting people like yourself, uh, being able to talk with people, building something that you've been able to build um, is just awesome. And it's so commendable because a lot of people would have given up a long time ago. So if you can get comfortable being uncomfortable, that means you're always learning. The person that knows everything can never learn anything. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Right. So don't yeah. be the I know person. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. I've already been there. It, it, don't be that person. Always keep an open mind, right? Uh, um, the mind is like a parachute, right? It works best when it's open. And if, if you can keep an open mind and, and start developing and really seeing what you're capable of, then those blessings will come because you're going to be on a pursuit for something. And now that belief sets in. And then once belief sets in, then faith steps in. And then once faith steps in, then you just follow faith. And, and destiny's right there at the end. So you have lived this. Yeah. 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 Because you spent 17 years, and a lot of people spend an entire lifetime doing something they're not happy with. You spent 17 years thinking about this for a long time, finally got motivated to start to do something. So talk about some of the, the challenges that you went through, in, because I think when people hear how you did this, now you've got a successful company, you're making more money now than you yeah. ever made before in the corporate world. You're happy, I think you wake up every day and you're really happy. How did, well, so t talk us through some of the personal steps that you made. Okay, so you know, I've been in it, several different businesses, right, in different industries. Some people look at um, what I've gone through as, well, he started something and, and failed, you know, I, because I didn't have the big cars and everything else, and, oh, I failed. So the way I see it is if you're willing to spend four to seven years in college learning, then all I did was I put myself through school. It was just a different kind of school. It was a school of reality um, because the business that I started, yeah, they went well. I had business partners, but um, we had to shut down for different reasons. Right? And I started another one and people would wonder, well, why do you keep, you know, starting these businesses? You know, they, they go up and right. It's the roller coaster. Well, think of it like this. Just like in college, you start with a major and then you change your mind and then you change your mind again and you're still going to college. I was still going to school. I just didn't have anyone there to tell me the do's and don'ts. I just had to try it, you know, and, and fail. So for me, fail stands for first attempt in learning. I, yeah, I love so, that. So, you know, I'm okay yeah. failing. I, I'm going to fail, but I will get back up. 
and I'm going to fail and I'm going to get back up. And really, that's what success looks like is being able to fail, get knocked down, get laughed at, get told you're not going to be able to do it. Why would you do it? That was the dumbest thing you could have ever done. Right. But still being able to get back up. So what I had to do was just have a bigger vision of what I really wanted a bigger vision for my family, um, for my destiny. And then the other part is the positive impact that I could have on more people. What, what, what would that look like? Being able to go through what I put myself through and I chose to do it, right? Every business, it was, it was a decision, but coming out of it, now being able to sit with others and, and saying, okay, this is where I made my mistake. Don't do this part, do this part, right? Yeah. And that's really where I began to develop. And here's the other part, I'm still learning, right? We I'm, all learn. Right, it, it I'm still ends. learning yeah. and, and I enjoy it. I enjoy that learning process. If you can learn to love the process, that's really where life is, is within the process. So if you've got the goal and then you've got a path there, just make sure that you know what the path is, enjoy the path. And you may have to go a different route here and there, but you have that goal and you're on that journey. So I do everything I can to enjoy the journey itself, the process. We're on a journey every day. I, I tell everybody every day, whether you're in prison or not, this is a day of your life you're never going to get back. Yeah. So my gosh, make the most out of it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life, make the most out of it and, and maximize your, your thinking, your dreaming, write down those goals and, yeah. and, and, and be focused. Yeah. Yes, you're sitting in prison, learn, learn to read, get yeah. a GED, get, then get yeah. a degree, then, then learn how to fix the lights and the plumbing around. I, yep. I've got friends that have done that. They learned everything they could in prison. Then they get out and they're successful. They created a business plan while they were sitting there. Yeah. And I think you're talking about all of those kinds of steps. Now, I think you've got some re free resources for people too. Yeah. So, you know, what I, I enjoy doing is I put out different videos and whether it's myself or an inspiring story, um, people can go to directly to my website, thekjeffect.com and click on uh, the KJ Effect YouTube channel and watch the videos. Uh, here's the thing is that I want to provide some sort of resource to tap into the mind, to tap into someone who says, I'm not going to be able to, or I can't, or I just don't think I have it in me. So what I do is I tell different stories, some sort of motivation or inspiration to get you to see what's really inside of you. So then you can work on you and then you can go after the things that you really want. So um, they can go there at any point in time and watch videos. Great. The KJ effect dot com. Com. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We want people to go there. Now, I, you've worked with so many people. You have to have tons of success stories, but is there one that you want to share with us to kind of encourage us about somebody that has made it? Yeah. Besides you? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, st and still making it, right? Still working on it. Uh, yes, yeah, so I met a young man. It's been about, I'd say, eight, ten years ago. And... Um, young guy and uh, you know he he too has been incarcerated um his name is alfred walton and um when, when i met this young man he was he was trying to work out life you know he's got kids and everything else but when i sat down with him um he began what it was was he he was open he was willing to listen. He was willing to take the mentorship. And um, I've been a friend of his for, for years. We're now business partners. But what we were able to do is establish a clarity, a, a ground, a, a, a part where he can lay roots in and find out who he really is and who he wants to be. Um, and he's been through a lot um, during his incarceration and, and out and everything else. I was with him. I was taking him to his meetings and everything else and just constantly pouring into him that, man, you're better than this. I know there's more in you. And he began to really see it. See, sight, his sight turned to vision. Mm -hmm. And then once he had his vision, then he locked in. And then when I when I let him know. So here's the thing. Being a business owner, being an entrepreneur you don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have worked in the corporate world. You don't, you can, you can make that decision. And that's what he decided to do was, um, you know, he said, okay, well, you know, Mr. Jackson, I, you know, I'm going to go get a job. He went and got a job. He's very successful. He was working, uh, with Microsoft actually, um, got a job. And then he started looking at business opportunities and, um, we were business partners for a while and now we're, um, business partners in another venture. So he's began to develop into, 
the person he really wants to be, not just for himself, but for his kids. Alfred has grown as a person. He's grown in spirit, um, very close to God. Um, we, we talk about God often. We talk about his goals and, and his purpose and being able to work with him now um, with, with what we're doing. And what he really wants to do is help kids. So one of his biggest goals is to have a, a children's foundation where um, he can build schools. And um, that's what he really wants to do is help kids. He always wanted to uh, work with kids. And, and now because of his record, if you will, um, he's, he has that stumbling block, right? But what he found was being an entrepreneur, going his own direction, having a mentor, now sky's the limit, now he's free. And that's what's really cool is, is being able to work with, with someone like him. Um, and he's helped me. It's not just one way. This is this is both ways. I've been able to learn from him. I've been able to see the excitement um, that he brings to the table, the dedication that he has and and being friends with someone like that. He's one of my five. Right. And, and we've been able to grow together. And, and now with our business venture, he's excited to help people that may be incarcerated that, you know, they're getting out and what are they going to do? And we have options for them now. We have well, business and, opportunities and what you for did people. is you created um, a relationship with him of trust. Mm -hmm. You were that mentor that kept keeping him focused. Come on, let's go in this direction. Mm -hmm. We're not going to wander here and there yeah. and everywhere. And then uh, everybody has gifts. So, of course, then he started pouring into you as yeah. well. And that's what a good relationship should be. But I think so many people start straying and they, they go back to the, the good old boys and the old <laughs> patterns and the old yep. the neighborhoods. And they don't, they don't see that vision. They don't start looking ahead. Yeah. And, and I think that's what, what you've been able to do for yourself and for him and for so many others. Yeah. So, well, that's wonderful. Lastly, um, you've talked about a golden shovel. And I just want you to share that very quickly with our audience because I, I'm intrigued with that terminology. So the golden shovel, right? We get used to, we get the, we get the degree, get the job. We're getting paid a lot. And then we just start buying things, right? And we get this golden shovel and we just start digging a hole and we're digging. And I call the golden shovel because the money's really good, but we're just digging our, ourselves into a hole that we're, we're really never going to be able to get out of. So we want to avoid picking up that golden shovel. The golden shovel has the credit cards attached to it, <laughs> right? It has all the things that we really don't need. And we all buy things we don't need, but um, it's when you, you look at what you're making and you put yourself in a position where something or someone can give you everything you want, but it can take everything you have. And, wow. and that's the golden shovel. And you never want to, you never want to hold that golden shovel because, right, it's in the Bible, the borrower will always be a slave to the lender. Yep. Well, that is perfect. And boy, I'll tell you what, I told you, everybody, we were going to learn a lot today from Ken and about your why. And it's so important to have that in your life. And it